Big hugs. <laughs> Big hugs. Big hugs. This is our second time, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Have to do this twice. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we are here in Collinsville, Oklahoma, at the Dream Big, Dream Big Today event. Because I don't know what we called it. January. Oh, so. As of right this moment, it's just the event, but it's our first the event. The, um, the event of the century. No. The event of the century. <laughs> it's our first co ed event. Not couples, not singles, not girls, not boys, not men or women. Um, anybody and everybody. How about that? Yeah, we got some brand new ones yes, here. We do. Yeah, so excited um, to have everybody here this morning. They're all eating breakfast, and my setup's a little bit different. I normally try to uh, turn. Well, you know what I can do. Go around okay, the room. I'm going to go around the room yeah. first. Okay. That's a good idea. Okay. There we go. Oh, you guys know we weren't really making it up. We really were. Just perfect. Oh, my goodness, Michelle. Anything but perfect. <laughs> Is that better? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Ready to get started? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I hope you have lots of insight. <laughs> I hope you do too. I always like to hear your nuggets. <laughs> well, first of all, it's not November the third. <laughs> November the fifth, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. November the 5th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's Ezekiel. So I talked to the group last night about Ezekiel, and boy, it continues. I'm going to make one more adjustment for us. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. Yeah, now we're not feeling like we're straining our neck like that. <laughs> <laughs> We're reading Ezekiel chapter 12 through 14. Did everybody read? Oh. Had it. <laughs> <laughs> so again, this whole event is about hearing the voice of God. We talked about it, talked about it last night, and we prayed about it, prayed about it. And then again, Ezekiel. My goodness, Ezekiel. I mean, I guess really, here we are. This is November the 5th of 2022. Oh, I'm Elizabeth Inman. This is my good friend, Michelle Baker. She's a leader in our ministry, in God's ministry. Well, she's a leader in God's ministry in a lot of different locations. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, but we were here, you know, talking about hearing God's voice and we all just, when we start reading the book of Ezekiel, we just think, well, he, you know, he's one of the major prophets. Of course he hears God's voice. But then when you stop and think about it, he was just a man. I mean, last night I had everybody poke everybody to feel their carnality to feel the flash the point being made was he's just a man like you're just a man he's just a man like you're just a woman and yet we get the holy spirit and you know the bible tells us that we have the holy spirit and we're sealed we're sealed with the holy spirit which gives us that extra boost of power. I mean, all of the power that God from before the beginning of the earth set aside for us humans is ours 
and is sealed in us. Ezekiel did not have the opportunity of the comforter in the format in which Jesus spoke of, because Jesus' own words is, in my place will come the comforter. Now, we talked about how the Holy Spirit certainly was present, because in the beginning was God, and God was with, with yeah, the word was God, and the word is with God, and the word is God. I mean, I didn't say that very good, did I, Michelle? It's still here. early, so. Oh, okay. Oh, man, is it early? The coffee Honestly. hasn't kicked in yet. Oh, okay, speaking of coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my whole point is, is that he didn't have the advantage that we have. I'm trying to get everybody to understand and think about this. Think about this. He's no respecter of persons. Did you read what he said to Ezekiel today? I mean, do you understand that there were probably people making fun of Ezekiel? I mean, we won't even go up and tell somebody in Walmart that Jesus loves them because we're afraid they'll think we're kooky. We won't. I mean, we don't go to, to work and, and, and witness to the, our coworkers. Because so what if we get in trouble at work? Or what if they think we're weird? I mean, that's what's getting me about Ezekiel this year is that I, I here's the deal. In case you guys have missed it the last week, because it's been all week long, that reading through Ezekiel is like, God has so much more for us. We underestimate what God wants to do in us, John. We underestimate. And, and then we settle in and we get complacent. And Matt, we just get up every day and we go to work and we get come home and, and then we get up and we go to work. And we, I mean, what did it take, guys? Chris, what did it take? What did it take for Ezekiel at a time when the infilling of the Holy Spirit was not present in the same way that it is now? I mean, for us believers, guys, it is it is really, truly as easy as being at the, at the tip of our fingers. If we will focus and if we will listen, God does speak. And, and even if we're not a place in our walk that we open our eyes and I say, Michelle, Michelle, God told me. We, we open our eyes and then I go and do and I can assure you, we go and do, because we're focused on him, we're quiet, we're listening. And even though we don't think we hear God's voice, we get up and we go and we do. If we are born again believers, when we go and do, he's guiding us. I believe that with all my heart. We don't have to always acknowledge that, oh, well, God told me to get up and go to work today. I'm telling y'all. And especially for our men, God tells us to get up and go to work every day. God doesn't rain down $100 bills from heaven. I've never known of one situation that $100 bills rain down from heaven and he said, go pay your rent. Now, there's miraculous things that happen, but God empowers us to do what he tells us to do. He empowered Ezekiel to dress up as though he was going to be exiled and parade himself down through the streets to make a point to the people that they're getting ready to be exiled. He will, he speaks to us and we have the ability to listen, but sometimes it's just the complacency of, we just get up and do what we always do, Michelle. I mean, we get up every day, we go to work. We, we, you know, we're such good little Christians. We read our Bible in the morning. I mean, or sometimes we come to an event and we don't even read our Bible. Oh, did I say that? See, they're not even paying attention. They didn't even know I said that. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh that's your husband. <laughs> yes, sir, Rick. Yes, sir. <laughs> but my point is, Michelle, we can hear from God the same way Ezekiel heard from God. And, and in fact... In fact, this week, what has really gripped me, I believe, guys, because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, 
we can hear from God even better than Ezekiel did. That's what I'm getting out of the book of Ezekiel. It's not always easy reading. It's not fun listening to being exiled. But you, you know, when we live in a state as believers that we don't think we hear from God, it's as bad as being exiled to Babylon. And I think too that it's, um, you know, everyone has to start out somewhere. You know, I mean, everyone, we all have to, you know, and, and it's just the, when you first start, you know, really, you know, fine tuning and you hear God and then it just gets easier to the more you do. Yeah. You know, and it's like you recognize it more. Yeah. You know, the Bible says that we are his people and, and the sheep of his pasture and that he is our shepherd and we're his sheep and the voice of a stranger we will not follow. That's right. Yes, we That's know right. our father's voice. We do. And so we we just follow through with what he he asks us to do and prompts us to do, See, and he rewards us. That's a good point. You got me excited, so now I really want to talk. Oh, Is it yay. my turn? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I I hope you guys heard what she just said. The more we do it, the easier it gets. But see, it's written last night. Scriptures to us that exactly what she said and then she quoted another scripture can you say that again about the sheep will recognize his voice and not follow another shepherd and and uh we are his sheep and we know his voice and the voice of a stranger we will not follow it's really hard for me not to want to stand up and preach right now i'm just i'm just saying so we'll adjust the camera so this is what i want you guys to hear i want you guys to hear this I want you to hear this. Just because you say you don't hear God's voice doesn't mean you don't hear God's voice because it is written. You either believe this book or you don't. And it starts there. It starts there. It's why we read every, it's why we have to read every. Because the world is out here telling us all kinds of junk. And if we don't read what the truth is, we're going to believe the junk. We're going to believe. I mean, get into a room full of believers. Now, I'm really proud of this group because yeah. they didn't do that last night. We did not sit around last night and say, oh, I can't hear from God. Oh, I don't hear from God. Oh, I Even those that are probably still doubting their ability to hear from God, they still spoke with faith and with hope last night. Um, but 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 my point is, so I'm excluding you guys <laughs> from my statement. You get into a group of believers and sit around and talk, and it won't be long until it's well. I don't hear God that way. Well, I can't hear. Well, I wish I could hear God uh, the way Carrie hears God. Well, I wish I wish God would talk to me the way Eileen talks. I I just don't hear God. And you'll hear believers just make blanket statements. Nope. I don't hear his voice. I mean, really. And fortunately, a few years ago, that would have been me. But but that's why it's so important that we read. Yeah, thankful. We do hear our father's voice. We do hear, and he's always speaking to us. It's only through years and years and years of reading these scriptures over and over and over again. That I'm now at a place that I don't care who you are, what your status in life is. I don't care what your position is. You're not going to tell me. Elizabeth Inman, my own personal beliefs, not pushing this on anybody else, but me. That God's not always speaking to me. That he doesn't hear every prayer I pray. I believe he hears every prayer I pray. And I believe he answers every prayer I pray. I don't always recognize the answer. More often than not, I don't like the answer. But he answers every prayer yeah. that I pray. And that's that comes from this. And the surety to not be swayed by the opinion of the latest, greatest preacher out there. Right. Not to be swayed by the events of the people I love to hang out with. Comes from 
reading this word every single what do you believe and then too you know when we do when we when we pray you know and like you were saying you know god always answers but it's always in his timing as we know and you know we have to patiently wait on his answer that's right and you know it's not always the answer that we hope for but he knows what's best you know we know that and we know he loves us and he wants the best for us and he, you know, we just have to believe that whatever he chooses is what's best for us and, you know, just accept his will. And That's right. And, and, you know, everything she just said is what the book of Ezekiel today tells us. Why did God have him dress up and go out and act as though he was being exiled? Because he loved his people. He was warning them. He was giving them an opportunity to turn from their wicked ways. And then she said something that's critical that we have to sometimes wait on God. And immediately what came to mind is that the book of Daniel teaches me that. There was two times that Daniel, also a great prophet, prayed and asked God. And and one of them, now i got to remember my scriptures, one of them took three days, I believe, for the answer. And the next one took, I think it was two weeks. I don't know if those details are right. The bottom line is Daniel... Daniel prayed, God answered, and, and, and in the book of Daniel, you'll read that God answered him immediately, but in between God answering and it getting to Daniel, the, the archangel had to fight yeah. to get the answer, and so there was a delay, and so that, that waiting is so important, yeah. Michelle. And Daniel prayed to God every morning noon and night he and he prayed unashamedly i mean he he got out on that roof after you know his enemies went to the king and you know, the king made a decree that said you know they they tricked him into making this decree that no one can pray mm-hmm. no one can pray to anyone you know any other god you know but daniel boldly stood and said i'm gonna pray because i know i know you know i know my god is real so then what happened he went to the lion's den. That's right. And then what happened? God protected him. That's right. He was thrown in a den of hungry lions. And they, God sent an angel and shut those lions' mouth. That's right. And so, you know, I mean, God is that, is, he's the same God. He, he is. is the same God now that he was then. And he's always on our side. He's fighting for us, Amen. you know, when whatever we're going through. He is fighting for us, and we can be encouraged. Girl, go. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, apply this to Ezekiel. So how can you read this and not wonder? Here we are at this beautiful home out on 99 acres um, with this event center that was created. She told us, she hugged me last night when we came in and said, I built it for you, meaning our ministry. What if? What if they came in in the next 10 minutes and broke these doors down because somebody had told them that we were reading God's word or we were speaking the name of Jesus in here and they put chains on us and they drug us out and we were in captivity. I mean, we have to ask ourselves those things. We have to let our minds go there. We're so spoiled in the United States of America I mean, we are being challenged more and more in the history of the United States. There's never been a time that us speaking Jesus or speaking the word of God has ever been as under attack as it is right now. I just got to check in my spirit. Maybe when they first settled the United States, it was that bad. Um, What if? I mean, we have to, we have to, first of all, I think the most important thing for us to understand is the grace of God. So the reason why Ezekiel could do what Ezekiel did when we won't even go to work and witness to the person sitting next to us, or, I mean, we, you know what, is there one person in here, don't raise your hands, (laughs) but is there one person in here that if last night God told you to dress up as though they had come in and put chains on you and was dragging you out. Would you do that? Would you have woke up this morning and put those, I mean, it's, it's a type and shadow of what God asked Ezekiel to do. I I have to ask myself that. I mean, I'm coming in here. 
I'm supposed to be the leader. And yet I have to ask myself, would I have been bold enough for God to do that? I, I can tell you, I want with everything in me to say yes. I want with everything in me this. I want to think that just like Paul and Silas inside of that prison with no bed, no cot, no television, no video games, being no fed, phone. no phone. Oh my gosh, no phone. That's prison right there, isn't it? Good point, good point. Sitting there in prison, knowing they want to kill him. And what did they do? They sang and worshiped God in chains, in chains. You're right, Amanda. Is that me today? Is that me today? I mean, if they take me to jail, I get a television. If they take me to jail. If I go to prison, I get, I get a courtyard and I get, I get three square meals. And I, I mean, I have rights. I, I mean, I'm being a little sarcastic because we really don't get it. To, mm -hmm. Today, if you're alive today in this generation, you really don't get the conditions. Yeah, under it was which, really bad then. We don't get the conditions under which Ezekiel lived. And yet he heard God's voice in such a way that 25, 2,500 years later, 2,500 years later, we're still reading the stories. Yeah. And they're giving us strength. And they're you know, giving we, us strength. When we read the, you know, what uh, they went through in the Bible and they lived yeah. through it. Because God helped them live through it. <laughs> live to tell. And, yeah. 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 Um, there are those across the land, across the globe that die every day yeah. for the sake of the, we're just not asked very often in America to do that. We're not faced with that very often, but here's the deal too. So it's not about beating us up. It is about us digging deeper. It's okay, Lord, really and truly, it's not even digging. It's not anything we do. It is flat out laying ourselves prostrate before the Lord and saying, Lord, change me. Change, you change me. I can't change me. I cannot change me. But I can give up my will. I can stop my thoughts long enough to be still. And I can give him permission to do inside of me whatever needs to be done. Yeah, you know, we have the blessed hope. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the hope. You know, if, if a person doesn't have hope, they don't have anything. That's exactly right. You know, and so if we ever find ourselves in that place, you know, where we feel like we don't have hope. We have to grab hold of God with all of our heart. I mean, we have to do sure. that anyway, we do. but more so then, you know, and just get grounded in him mm -hmm. and, you know, because he fills our hearts and our lives with hope. Yes. Hope mm -hmm. deferred makes the heart sick. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I just love it that this was the week leading up to our yes. event, talking about hearing God's voice. And it was Ezekiel. It was Ezekiel. And it, and it, and and that's what I want to say about reading this word is if you're looking at it and if you're reading, <clears throat> there are nuggets that will apply to your life today. Now, the first time, if this is your first time to go through the Bible, don't get discouraged. And guys, I you guys will be faster than I was. I was slow. I struggled. I mean, I went through several years of arguing with God. Why do I have to read the Old Testament? Why well, is that relevant? I'm a new covenant believer. I, I'm, a, I'm under grace. You know, oh my gosh, I blocked so many blessings just by that mindset. But, but I believe that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a discipline that we learn. God helps us and he gives us the grace for that discipline. So he's the source of that discipline. And when we tell him, Lord, I want to know you, and he says, read my book, because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God, that he will give you the grace necessary to have the discipline to do it. But the number one thing is don't give up. You read, and you go through, and you think, 
what does that have to do with anything? And you come on the Bible study and Michelle and Lori and Debbie have all these insights and you go, wow, how did they get that? Um, it'll happen. It, it happens because they've done it year after year after year. Yeah. This isn't the first time for them to read all the way through the Bible. And I think too, you know, like you were saying, don't get discouraged when you first start out trying to read the Bible regularly. And, you know, I know that when I first started really trying to, you know, it's it, it's about discipline. You know, the Lord helps you to discipline your your life and your time and your mind. And, you know, uh, at first, you know, you're just going to, or well, it was, this was this way for me. You know, I would read it and I really wouldn't get a lot out of it, you know. Um, but that can change, you know, when we ask God to help us to understand it and comprehend it and absorb it and that we just still our lives you know, long enough when we read it and we, you know, we're, when we do that, we're showing reverent, reverence to the Lord and he will help us, you know, through the Holy Spirit and it becomes alive to us, you know, yes. and, and it's not just reading, you know, just to get the reading in or whatever. And, you know, uh, it's that it's really helping us to change and yes. become more like him and yes. to pattern our lives more after him and, you know, the more you read it, like you said, mm -hmm. we're saying earlier, you know, it just, it just reinforces that and it, it mm -hmm. just helps us and, to be stronger. And then stand on the promise. If, if you are at that place that reading every day is a, still a struggle, first of all, don't give up. Second of all, stand on the promise that is written. He wrote it down for us. My word never returns void. Yeah, so it doesn't say, well, if you're confused, my word's void. Or if you understand, my word won't return void. No, 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 no. <laughs> when you make the sacrifice. So now think of the type and shadow of reading all the way through the Old Testament and all the sacrifices they were required to make that, praise God, were released from. But when we make the sacrifice to read, God honors that. Amen. And his word yes. never returns void. Amen. So it may take three years in a row that you've read all the way through. It may take six years yeah. in a row. Yeah. But to see, there's still pages. You guys have heard me say, I turn to pages that there's not very many colors. That means I didn't. Here's one right here coming up. Remember the 19th. I don't have very many things written. That, that's an indication. I've been reading this Bible for 10 years, this particular Bible for 10 years. And if I don't have anything written, you can bet it's where I've struggled. It and happens. He'll also show you when you get there. He you know, will. Because he'll, he'll illuminate that word for you. Yeah. And he'll make and a double line. getting more every time I read. Every yes. time I read. I've never gotten this stuff out of Ezekiel before. And Ezekiel isn't one of the ones I struggle through. It's pretty fascinating historical text. <laughs> the stories are pretty doggone fascinating. So I don't yeah. mind reading them. <laughs> but I've never gotten it to the degree of what's happening inside of me this year. And I think, too, that when you read through it, it helps you kind of to put the pieces together. Mm -hmm. You know, when you read through the whole Bible. Yes. And then it just clicks and it makes sense. Things, you know, you can hear Bible stories and, you know, and they're awesome. And, you know, but when you read it yourself and read through the Bible, it helps you to kind of put everything in place. Yes. Yes. Well, we're almost out. of. Well, I'm not going to say we're out of time yet. So. Let's talk about Hebrews. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about Melchizedek. One of those topics I used to like to avoid. Melchizedek. So you get to go, Michelle. Ooh, Rick just said, don't miss the, the supernatural and don't forget to look for the spectacular. Don't look for the spectacular. Let God, let God do 
the supernatural as we breathe. Oh, that's so good. Would somebody write that down for me? <laughs> okay, thank you. I really, 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 I really, really want to write that in my Bible. Don't look for the spectacular. Let God show you the supernatural. Oh, man, that's good. Going into Melchizedek. Something stand out in Hebrews today for you? Yeah, uh, and Melchizedek placed a blessing upon Abraham, the one who had already received the promises of God. And without question, the person who has the power to give a blessing is greater with blessed. Mm, thank you for starting it off that way. That was a good one. So this is what I got out of Hebrews this morning. So it's Hebrews 7, 1 through 17. I'm not about to tell anybody I fully understand Mikhail's, Mikhail's, that word I've been saying. But you know what I got this morning? Without Melchizedek, God would not have been able to say that we are his priests and priestess. Because God's law was that they had to come from the tribe of was it Levi? Was the priest the tribe of yeah. Levi? Thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, because the law was that to be a priest, it had to come from the tribe of Levi. And we read in today's reading that there is no record of Melchizedek's mother or father. Nobody knows what tribe they came from. And yet he's honored and spoken and labeled as a priest that allows us then through the blood of Jesus Christ to be seen by God as priests and priestess. Wow, what a privilege and an honor. Because if we think of ourselves the way God thinks of ourselves, he sees us as priests. See, we see ourselves as dirty, filthy rags. We see ourselves that deserves punishment. We, God wouldn't use me. Oh, you know, I just haven't studied my Bible enough. I just haven't, you know, if you were born into the tribe of Levi and you were a male, there was no question. It wasn't based on what you did. It was based on your lineage. And what God did was establish the lineage to allow for the adoption of you and I to be sons and daughters and for him to label us as priests. And we should conduct ourselves as priests. That's one way of looking at it. Another way is if I'm adopted by the king of kings as a daughter, which I am, then I'm royalty. I mean, I think of the way in my lifetime how people revered uh, Princess Diana. I mean, still today, many, many years after her death, you, you utter the name Princess Diana. First of all, there's recognition among almost everybody. And then second of all, there is a level of honor and respect that's given to her. Not because they knew her as a person. They didn't know her as a person. And, and there's enough known about her that she was flawed, as we all are flawed. But yet she was royalty. And we still honor and respect her as royalty. We are to honor and respect ourselves as royalty. If you woke up every morning saying, ooh, I'm in my father's kingdom. My father, the king of kings, is training me today for my position in his kingdom. How different would you live your life? How different would you live your life? Instead, I'm just a bum. Oh, I'm just a girl who made all kinds of mistakes. But it's the renewing of our minds takes place when we read this word. Yeah. Amen. So right. anything okay. else in maybe Psalms or Proverbs or this the part is read in the, the one year Bible. Psalm 105, verse 39, starting in verse 39. Is that underlined? All right. 
the Lord spread a cloud above them as a covering. And he gave them a great fire to light the darkness. Mm. They asked for meat, and he sent them quail. He satisfied their hunger with manna bread from heaven. He split open a rock, and water gushed out to form a river through the dry wasteland. You know, and I think that that's, you know, he did that for the Israelites all those years ago. And that, you know, speaks to us that, you know, God, God sees, you know, God sees mm-hmm. and he knows when we're desperate, we're in a desperate place, whatever it is. You know, I think there was people them. here last, last night. I didn't even guys. mean to interrupt oh, you're you. Good. Are you probably, oh, sorry. I think last night we had some people that the Lord uh, spread a cloud above yeah. them as a covering. And he gave them a great fire to light the darkness. Yeah, probably. I think that we had a few walk in with some darkness last night. And I think that he parted it with his light. Does that happen? I, pray, I, I, mm-hmm. yes. I think he's going to continue even more yes. today. Amen. He will. really do. Oh, we'll, we'll end with the Proverbs 27.3. A stone is heavy and sand is weighty, but the resentment caused by a fool is even heavier. Oh my. So we're at an event. We have people in the room. We're getting ready to move into this next um, portion of our uh, schedule. I just ask everybody right now, and at the sound of my voice, if you're listening to this Bible study, wherever you are in the world, right now, just take a moment. And we're going to be silent in this room. And I want us, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. He, he refers to somebody with resentment as a fool. Right, right now, we're going to take a moment. Father God, search my heart. See, is there any, is there any wickedness in me? It, Lord, is there any resentment in me for anyone in my life, past or present? If he identified some resentment for you, the first step is to ask for forgiveness for that resentment. Father God, forgive me that I've held resentment in my heart. Lord, help me to release that resentment right now in a supernatural way that I'm not capable of. Lord, I, I thank you for revealing that resentment to me. I give you that resentment and I refuse to hang on to it any longer. And by your power, I'll be able to do that. If you will help me, Lord, I'm willing to give you my resentment so that you can take it away from me and throw it as far as the east is from the west. Because, Lord, I've had I've had trouble letting go of the resentment. Lord, I realize just from this one scripture that that resentment weighs me down. I realize, Lord, that that resentment causes me to be a fool. Give me, help me start fresh. Take that resentment from me. And I trust you, Father God. In Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us. I just wanted to add just a little tiny something that I thought of. Uh, You were talking about the power and that's what we have to have, you know, and there's a scripture in the Bible. I can't remember exactly how it, the whole wording of it is. But his divine power, we know it's his divine power, has given us everything we need to for life and godliness. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's exactly, you know, just like what, what you led us all to do mm-hmm. and pray, you know, that he, we know that his divine power is working in us mm-hmm. when we call out to him, bring things to him. Oh, good. We try to do it ourselves and we can't. Right. But his divine power. That was exactly the way we were supposed to end. Thank you. Thank you. God bless y'all.